One brown mink coat with a fox trim, one black mink coat, transformed into three teddy bears and a mink bunny. So this is the brown mink with the fox trim. It was in wonderful condition and great to work with. We're going to be using the lining for the foot pads as well as the ears, the inside of the ears. This is the black mink. It's full of wonderful texture. Um, also very, very nice to work with. Keeping the black lining for foot pads, ear pads as well. Here they are already cut and disassembled. As you can see, the fox is beautiful and it has a beautiful undercoat. And there is the texture that I was talking about earlier. And the mink as well, it's just gorgeous. Here is the deconstruction process. Uh, here I'm just working on removing lining as always and later I'm going to be removing the fox trim from the brown mink. Once all that is done, it's time to get your pattern pieces together. And what I did with my pattern pieces is I put them on um, freezer paper, so I made them nice and stiff and easy to trace around. And as you can see here, I used muslin and I traced it, the design onto each uh, template onto the paper. And I made my registration marks throughout where it shows the opening. Cutting out each individual piece and sometimes the uh, interfacing doesn't stick that well, so a little heat and steam will just layer all that on there. It works great. Uh, later on, I realized that I did not make two sets of feet, but that was rectified after. And here I am reheating. Seam allowance for the ears is different. It's a quarter, not a quarter of an inch away. It's an eighth of an inch, so I'm just adding my sewing lines on there. So this is the fox. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the front part of the template here on the fur, and then I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around this part. So, and then these I'm going to use for the ears. So the head is going to be the brown color and the gusset on the head will also be the brown color. The ears, two will be brown. And two will be fox. The arm outside of the arm is going to be brown. And the inside of the arm is going to be black. The leg There's going to be four of these, so 
So we have the inside of the leg and the outside of the leg. So this is gonna be the outside of the leg. It's going to be brown. And the inside is going to be black. And I need to make two more of these. And the little foot pads, I'm going to use the black fur. So now the color scheme is done, except for this part right here, which is the belly. This is already previously done. This is going to be the fox. And the back of the bear is going to be brown. Again, I'm going to have to add a quarter of an inch when I go to sew the two pieces of fur together. So now I am laying the templates onto the fur. Again, there's muslin there. And I'm going to take a glue stick, a water-soluble glue stick, and I'm just going to glue it down onto the fur to keep it in place. Um, it's not going to hold it there, but it's just in order to uh, prevent it from shifting when I go to cut it out. The heavy iron I use just to add a little pressure onto the fur when I am gluing it down. So here I'm using my farrier's knife to very carefully cut out each individual piece. So I'm doing all the browns at once, then I'll do all the fox at once, and then the black as well. Once that once I have everything cut, I am then going to start pinning them together so I can start sewing them. Uh, it's also very important to try to remove any of the hair that's in between the seam. You don't want a bulky seam allowance, so you can cut that away with either the knife or just a pair of scissors. Here I'm hand sewing it and I'm tacking it together because when I put it through the sewing machine I really don't want it to shift. Some of the pieces are awkward to sew so I will not be sewing it on the machine but some I will. The straight pieces I'll be able to sew on the machine. The ones that are really small or bulky where the seams are thick I'm going to have to do by hand sewing only. I ended up switching machines because uh, my FOF 2170 could handle the fur much better than my Viking machine. And then here I am, I'm just doing an overcast stitch on the edge just to keep it all together. Again, I said I was going to be doing straight stitches only on the sewing machine and any curved pieces I'm going to be hand sewing.
here I'm working on the head and I'm trying to figure out the eye placement. So I use just two straight pins and the little yellow dots represent the eyes and the nose. And that's what his face looked like when he was done. I would have had the uh, putting together of the bear, but somehow I lost that video. So I'm sorry about that. But here are all my little guys all made. Each one is different. The customer wanted them all to look different. Um, he wanted uh, his grandchildren to eventually have these uh, because this was his wife's furs. I also made a little collar that goes around their necks with some plastic snaps to hold them in place. And the lighter brown fur that you see on this face is actually the fox that has been shaved down. Here's the little bunny. He's adorable and cute. He's not jointed like the other bears. He's just a stationary plush bear where the other bears, I mean, uh, not bear, rabbit, um, the other bears, their joints do move, so they have movable joints. Each one is very unique with their own little character. Same pattern for each one, except for the bunny. Just goes to show you how just using something different can change the whole look. Come visit us at DynasQuilts.com.